Hi, I am Dr. Sheila John. I am working with Bishop Appasami College of Arts and Science in the Department of Costume Design and Fashion as head of the department. I am going to teach today about the basics of pattern making. Food, clothing and shelter are the three basic needs of mankind. Among the three, clothing is very significant as it is a part of man's personality. It reflects culture, status and the personality of the wearer. People prefer garments that are comfortable. Not just comfortable garments, but garments with good fit. And pattern making aids in creating comfortable and fit garments. A well designed garment will look beautiful and appropriate on the wearer. The success of the designer lies in creating unique designs not just on paper but on fabric too. And to attain this, a thorough knowledge on pattern making is indispensable. At the end of this lesson, you will learn the types of pattern making methods, significance and limitations of pattern making methods, drafting bodies block and sleeve pattern using flat pattern technique. Creating a garment is a laborious process. The process of developing a garment involves four main stages. First stage is developing of designs. Designer sketches number of designs based on the fabric and colors predicted by fashion forecasting. Customized designs also evolve by interacting with the customer and by knowing their preference and taste. Designs are created by the combinations of lines, shapes, texture, color and space. Second is preparation of patterns. The sill out of a design is analyzed and the pattern is created for the same in a paper or a muslin cloth. The art of pattern making requires skill and creativity because the pattern making is a process of creating two dimensional pattern pieces for a three dimensional garment. Third stage is cutting of fabric. Following the instructions given in the pattern, the fabric is cut. The cut pieces may vary from 1 to many pieces, maybe 10 pieces, 15 pieces or even 20 pieces for one single garment. The last stage is sewing where the cut pieces of fabric of different shapes are sewed together to form a garment. Like Sewing front and back at shoulder, attaching sleeve to the body's black, stitching collars to the neckline and so on. First, we learn about the methods of pattern making. Pattern making can be broadly divided into two types, drafting and draping. Drafting method is also termed as flat pattern method as the patterns are drafted on flat paper. Drafted patterns are of two types. The first one, the patterns that are drafted for a style and it is based on individual body measurements. The second type is commercial patterns where patterns are drafted for standardized body measurements. All these patterns of drafting involve mathematical calculation and has a set of instructions for drawing. The patterns will be drafted with an extra allowance called ease allowance. This gives free movement to the wearer. What is ease allowance? It is the difference between the body measurement and the garment measurement. This allowance vary at different positions like chest, hip, arm say, waist and so on. It is more at the chest and hip. It can be 4 cm to 10 cm whereas in arm say it is only 1 or 2 cm. For styles that are symmetric the patterns are drawn for one side only and for asymmetric styles the pattern is drawn for both the sides. For example in the style 1 which you will now see is the symmetric pattern. It is a plain tops. Only half of the pattern is drawn. 
So now you see a body's front and a body's back. The style 2 is an asymmetric pattern, hence the front pattern is opened and the style is drawn. So you see two front pattern and one body's back pattern, whereas in the style 1 you saw one front and one back. The shape of the pattern and the number of pattern pieces vary according to the style of the pattern. For example, let us now analyze the patterns of bib and jabla. Bib is a small piece of garment worn around the neck for infants. Here you see the silhouette of bib and the pattern for bib. Next is a garment is jabla which is a garment worn by the infant or a newborn baby. See the shape of the pattern. For bib the shape is different and for jabla the shape is different. The number of pieces to be cut for bib is 1 and in jabla the front pattern has to be cut twice whereas the back pattern has to be cut only once. And the next important one is the patterns will have description written on all the pattern pieces and this is termed as pattern details. Let us now see what it is one by one. Number one, name of the pattern. It refers to the name of the garment like frock, kurta, tops, shirt, etc. If the garment pattern is meant for bulk production, it will also include style number or order number. Number two, name of the pattern piece. It states whether it is a front or back or sleeve or collar and so on. If it is a front, it is written as body's front or body's back or skirt front or skirt back. The next one is stating whether it is a basic pattern or a final pattern. The basic pattern is also termed as block pattern or master pattern. Alterations if any will be made in the basic pattern only. When the seam allowance is made, it becomes final pattern and the fabric is cut using this pattern. The number 4, the number of pattern pieces to be cut is also mentioned. It refers to the count of the patterns to be cut. For example, for the sleeve pattern, the cut number is 2 and is mentioned as cut 2, which means cutting of fabric has to be done twice using this pattern. In other words, two sleeve patterns has to be cut on the fabric. Next is grain. It refers to the direction of the warp yarns in the fabric. The patterns has to be placed in the direction mentioned in the pattern during cutting. The details of the grain is usually referred with an arrow pointed on one edge or both the edges of a line with the notation S G. For bias, cut the arrow is tilted as 45 degrees. Another detail is on fold. This detail tells us that the fabric should be cut on a folded fabric at this particular position. It is usually in the center of the pattern. It is written vertically with single letter placed one below the other. Notches is another detail. This mark is shown as small line or V and is placed at the outer edge of the pattern usually in the seam allowance. It is placed in parts which will be stitched together. For example, body's front and back is joined with sleeve. A notch is placed in the arm side of the body's front and sleeve front and another notch is placed in the body's back and sleeve back. While stitching, the notches of the body's block and sleeve are matched and this helps in perfect stitching and neat finishing. Dart Positions The position of the darts are drawn as inverted V for a single pointed dart. For a double pointed dart, the inverted V is placed over a straight V. The Pleats and Tucks 
the position of the and width of the pleats or tags are marked in appropriate places as two parallel lines. Now you will see two patterns. The first one is a basic pattern and the second one is a final pattern. And in these patterns you will see that the first pattern basic pattern and it does not have seam allowance and the final pattern has seam allowance. In the first line of the pattern you can see the name of the pattern and in the second line of the pattern you can see the name of the pattern piece. You can also see the darts in both the patterns. The straight grind is also marked as SG near a pointed arrow. An on fold is placed with the words written one below the other. In the final pattern you can see notches marked in the seam allowance line of the arm side and the neckline. Next we will see the methods of drafting or flat pattern technique. These are divided into two groups. The first one patterns drafted for individual measurements and the second one is commercial patterns. The first method is drafting patterns for individual measurements. This is widely used by fashion designers, homemakers, tailors and garment units. The advantages of this method are it is cheaper as it is involves only brown paper and drawing tools like pencil and scale. As it is drafted on paper it also saves the cost of fabric because if a wastage occurs in the fabric it will be costlier which is eliminated by the alternate use of paper. Creative and unique garment designs can be created with this method. Alterations if any can be done in the basic pattern. This method is more ideal for bulk productions where cutting are made many times. The patterns can be preserved for a longer period of time if it is made on a thick brown paper. For more longer duration it can be glued onto a chart or cardboard. These patterns can be reused even when the order is repeated after an year. Thus we see it saves time and labor. With one size of pattern other pattern sizes can be developed by the grading process. What is grading? It is a process of increasing or reducing the sizes. If a pattern for S size that is small size is created other sizes like M, L and XL that is medium, large and extra large can be developed. Economic cutting can be achieved by making a suitable layout which is done by arranging pattern pieces on the fabric in different ways. With economic cutting fabric cost can be minimized. This is vital when it is a bulk cutting where layers of fabric are cut. Wastage of 1 cm in one layer leads to 100 cm in 100 layers. The limitation of this method is it requires a skilled person who can imagine the two dimensional pattern pieces which will be soon into a three dimensional garment. The person should have a technical knowledge about pattern drafting and its principles. This pattern making method involves mathematical calculations so it may not be easy for all. It is not suitable for garments with complicated drapes. The next method of drafting is commercial patterns. Commercial patterns are standard patterns prepared by companies for sale. It comprises of three components the envelope, the patterns and the instruction sheet. The envelope will have the sketch of the garment and the set of measurements for which it is made. It will also suggest suitable fabric and the amount of fabric 
to be purchased. The patterns will be created on a tracing paper, butter paper or tissue paper with all the details printed on it. The instruction sheet will give the details of the number of pattern pieces, method of cutting and the meaning of the details, notations and lines found in the pattern. Commercial patterns are prepared for a set of standardized body measurements and it is available for certain styles only. This method is ideal for people who do not have a knowledge of pattern making but have learnt the art of sewing. The next method is draping method. Draping is the process of creating patterns with muslin cloth on a body form. A piece of fabric is draped on the body form with positions of darts and pleats. This is done in a cheaper and thinner fabric named muslin. This method is ideal for garment styles with drapes. We can create interesting and beautiful drapes through the draping method. If a person remains in the same size, the garments can be ordered through phone. The customer need not go to the couturier for giving measurements. He or she will create the garment with the help of the dress form. The limitation for this method is preparation of body form for the individual persons. It is costly, time consuming and a laborious process. In majority of the cases, people change in sizes and hence the dress form becomes useless after a period of time and again the process of making a dress form has to be started all over again. Now we are going to learn about the drafting of body's block and sleeve for children by flat pattern technique. In this module, I am going to teach you about the method of creating the body's block and sleeve. First, we will see the instructions one by one. A vertical line is drawn and marked as 0 on top and 4 at the bottom. The measurement for the line 0 to 4 is waist length plus 1 cm. On this line mark 3 which is 1 by 4 chest from 0. Measure and mark 0 to 6 as 1 by 2 of back width. This measurement is taken from shoulder to shoulder. Create a horizontal line at 3. The measurement at this position that is 3 to 10 is 1 by 4 chest plus 3 centimeter. 6 to 11 is equal to 0 to 3. Connect 6 and 11 as shown. 6 to 7 is equal to 22 centimeter and this is a slant line for the shoulder slope. Shoulders will not be straight, it will have a slant as you all know. 0 to 5 is neck width which is 1 by 12th of chest. 0 to 1 is back neck drop which is 2 centimeter. 0 to 2 is front neck width which is measured as neck width 0 to 5 plus 2 centimeter. Neck width and neck drop can be changed according to the taste and preference of the wearer. The shape also can be changed according to their taste. Now we will mark the arm side from 7. 7 to 8 is one third of 7 to 11. Connect 7, 8 and 10 as shown. This is back arm side line. The front arm side line is deeper and so mark a point 9 which is 2 centimeter from 8. 
connect 7, 9 and 10 as shown. This is front arm side line. We will now mark the waist line and the side seam line. 3 to 4 is equal to 10 to 12 and 3 to 10 is same as 4 to 12. Connect 10, 12 and 4 as shown. To give shape to the sides, mark a point 13 from 12 with 2 cm. Connect 10 and 13 as shown. For making a dart, mark a point 17 by calculating 4 to 17 as half of 4 to 13 minus 1 cm. 17 to 16 is equal to 10 to 12 minus 3 cm. Connect 16 to 14 and 16 to 15 that is the width of the dart may be 1 cm or 2 cm as preferred. Now you have drawn the single pointed dart at the waistline. The drafted pattern now contains body's front and back. Trace the front pattern separately and the back pattern separately. The front pattern is 2, 5, 7, 9, 10, 13, 4 and 2. The back pattern is 1, 5, 7, 8, 10, 13, 4 and 1. This is the basic body's front and back. Give seam allowance for the front and the back. At the shoulder, waistline and side seam add 1.5 cm. And at neckline, center back and arm side add 1 cm. This is the final pattern. Add pattern details. The pattern is now ready for cutting. What you have seen now is the final pattern of body's front and back with seam allowance. The front pattern is to be cut on fold and the cut number is 1. The cut number for the back pattern is 2. Both the patterns are to be cut on a straight grain. We will now learn about the method of drafting a sleeve pattern. Draw a vertical line 0 to 3 which is the measure of sleeve length. 0 to 1 is a horizontal line and is calculated as 1 by 4 chest minus 2 cm. 0 to 1 is equal to 3 to 2 and 0 to 3 is the same as 1 to 2. Make a rectangle 0, 1, 2 and 4 as shown. 1 to 4 is half of 0 to 1. Connect 0 to 4 as shown. Divide line into 4 equal parts and mark 5, 6, 7 as shown. I am going to show the 0 to 4 line alone for a clearer understanding. In this line 0 to 4 mark points 8 and 9 above 5 and 6. The points 10 and 11 are drawn below 4. The measurements for marking 6 to 9, 7 to 10 is 0.4 cm. For marking 5 to 8 and 9 to 11 it is 0.8 cm. Connect 0, 8, 6, 11 and 4. This is front arm side. Connect 0, 8, 9, 10 and 4. This is back arm side. To give shape to the side seam, mark 12, 1 cm inside. That is 12 to 2 is 1 cm. Cut the pattern with 3 to 2 on fold. Cut the back arm side line in both the layers. That is 2 layers. Open the pattern and cut the front arm side in the front layer alone. This is the basic sleeve pattern. Add seam allowance for the final pattern. At arm side line add 1 cm and at side seam line add 1.5 cm. 
at hemline add 2.5 cm. Cut the hemline first by keeping the line 3 to 2 folded up. So the hemline will follow the slant of the side seam line while stitching. Now you have learnt the basics of pattern making, importance of pattern making and the types of pattern making methods, the principles of pattern making. Also you have learnt the flat pattern technique of drafting bodies block and sleeve. You can try the same with children's measurements of different age groups. In the next module you will learn about the method of drafting patterns using draping method. Hope you enjoyed learning the pattern making class. Thank you. God bless you.